Hey guys, Jared with Backwards Animation, and I've got a run cycle for you today. So in this course, I'm going to be talking about a run cycle, how I would do a profile run cycle for a sideways run cycle. Now, this is part of a much larger course where I go through this action-packed sequence of run cycles and jumps and compositing all this animation together to create something really cool. Um, so if you want to take that course, click the link below to take my full Skillshare class and uh, really level up on your animation and action skills. But for the purposes of this one, you're still going to get a really awesome run cycle tutorial and learn how I would do this. So let's get into it. So we're going to tackle the sideways run. So what we have to do is we have to start to position our character in the sideways position. All right, cool. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the keyframes. I'll put the shoulders below the head. I like everything to kind of flow from top to bottom. So head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. So I'm going to select the head and the body. I'm going to animate the torso first. So hit P and we're going to add a keyframe. Um, and then I want this to be a pretty fast run cycle. So if we do, um, let's say we do eight frames for half of a run cycle, which would be 16 frames for a full run cycle. Let's do that. So right here at, um, frame four, his body's going to move down. So with his layer selected, I'm just going to do... Maybe I'll do down two, and then right here at eight, we'll copy and paste. Okay, so now we have half of a run cycle. We have one leg down and back, and then we need to do the other leg down and back. Okay, so right here at, tw well actually right here at eight, what we're going to do is select our positions for the head, copy and paste, and we'll do so for the um, shoulders and then so for the body. And then I know that I want to actually adjust the curves to it. So hit F9. Once you have all your keyframes selected in blue, F9 on the keyboard, we'll do easy ease. And then we're going to come into the graph editor. Right click the, gra the graph editor and make sure you have speed graph selected, not value graph but speed graph. And what we're going to do with this speed graph is as he comes down, I know that I want it to move slow. So we'll move this in. And maybe we'll crunch this over a little bit. And so he's going to slowly start to drop and then he's going to rapidly hit bottom. boom, And then I want him to rapidly bounce back up. So I'm going to pull this in this way, okay? <clears throat> so now we have this very sharp mountain with a very deep peak, okay? And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I could copy and paste these frames, but I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to do it by hand. Okay, so let's see how this looks. This should give a nice bounce to him. Oh, I love it. Almost like he's on a trampoline, but he's running. All right, so that looks great. It's a perfect flow. I think the speed and the timing of his bounce is perfect for a run. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna animate one foot. So hit P and then hold Shift and R. So now that we have that one keyframed, we're going to move forward to position four right here. And this point is where the leg is going to come down. It's going to hit the bottom. Okay. And then I'm going to rotate it upward just slightly. And then I'm going to hit 
page down one keyframe and I'm going to flatten the foot out. Boom. So that's my impact. Um, and then right here at eight, we're going to move the foot back. But we're not just going to go back on the ground. We're actually going to go back and up. So we're going to have such a quick, a quick little um, speed through as he touches the ground. He's only on the on the ground for like two or three frames, and then his foot's going to come up. Okay. And then right here at the last keyframe. We're going to copy and paste back to zero. But next what we get to do is we're going to actually edit some of these positions that his foot goes on. So I want his foot, I want his foot to, when it's in the back pose, to come up just a little bit. So I'm going to pull this up. And then it's going to dip down. I want it to start to dip down right here as it comes upward into position. Okay. And then we need to do some work on this flat part. So hold Alt, and we're going to pull this um, control point out pretty far. And we want to keep it flat. Even though my control point's dipping downward, um, we want to make sure that our keyframes that it follows are pretty much flat onto our ground plane. Um, so let's look at what we got going on here. So he hits, boom. I'm going to do another keyframe here where his foot is kind of flat. And then he starts to arc up. Okay, and then right here in the passing position for his foot, we want it to to, we want the toe to dip downward like it's being dragged. Okay, and then it'll snap upward. Okay, so with my positions and my rotation selected, I'm going to hit F9 on the keyboard. And I'm going to start to think through some of this some of this stuff. So I'm going to I'm going to select my position and I'm going to go into the graph editor. I want this foot to feel like it's slamming down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crunch this guy all the way over so that it it slowly start to it slowly starts to sink down and then it slams to the ground. Boom. And then as it comes up I want to I think I want this one to kind of have a quick transition from the from one keyframe. It's going to really speed up through here and ease in right there. So let's just take a look at what we've got right now. All right, that's awesome. All right, guys, so I think that's looking really good. Um, so what we can do now, what we can do is we're going to select all these keyframes, <clears throat> go control C, and then I want to see and make sure that nothing changes when I paste. So I go into the graph editor and I'm going to hit V while I'm right here at my ending point, frame 16. Okay, a little bit changed. So let's see what changed. Specifically, right here. This one changed. The Actually, the rotation of that part didn't change. Um, let's see. Oh, you know what? Something else changed up here. So if you see, instead of it curving down in the way that we positioned it before, we now have this arc upward, which makes the leg look funny. We don't want that, so let's see if we can fix it. Okay, and so there's a lot of like reverse engineering that we have to do. So I'm gonna find this guy and we're gonna pull it down to match. Okay, that looks pretty good. 
Um, and since I've adjusted, have I adjusted this keyframe? Let's see. That looks pretty good. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually copy these, the last keyframe because it has the most edited and I'm gonna paste it at the beginning. Okay, and so that should clean up any of this weird changing of the path um, orientation and speed graph editor. And so now what I can do again is I can copy these keyframes and drop it in place. So now I have a perfect loop, um, mainly because I edited this last keyframe to be exactly how I needed it, and then I pasted it back at zero. So long-winded explanation. What we can do now is copy all of these keyframes, and we're gonna paste them onto our left foot. Hit U to bring up our keyframes. And right here at eight, that's where this leg is gonna start. So anything before it, we can delete. Then we can grab all our keyframes and move them forward so that our old eight positioning is now our zero keyframe. So let's watch it and see how his run looks. Okay, that's not too bad. But what we have to do with this foot because their, their hip positioning is different, that means that their foot positioning will be a little bit different. So on the left foot, because his hip is farther forward, we're gonna move the leg farther forward, maybe two. So I held, held shift and went forward two frames. All right, that looks better. Cool, so now we have the legs moving and everything's doing pretty good. Now we get to animate the hand. So hit P and hold shift and hit R we're gonna key the position and rotation. Now the hand is a little different. There's only two keyframes. There's the back pose, and then right here at eight is the front pose. So I'm gonna move it forward into the front position. Um, and this might change as we animate. I'm not sure exactly how far forward I want it to go. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll move it up closer to his face. All right, so that's, um, I think that'll do pretty good. Uh, we also wanna make sure that he has a big swoop to it. Let's see this back. I'm gonna, maybe I'll extend the back a little bit more. All right, that looks pretty good. And then we're gonna copy the first keyframe back there. And I'm going to move this little guy back into position so it matches the original curve. So if you just hold Alt, you can manipulate these two guys. Um, and to save us any, any copy and pasting headaches, I'm gonna copy the last keyframe and paste it in the front. It's just a little kind of oversight for After Effects. I don't know why that happens, but it is a headache and a pain in the butt. Okay, so with my keyframes selected, what I'm gonna do, <clears throat> I'm gonna select them in the graph editor, and I'm gonna crunch these guys really far in on both sides. Okay, so now we have these two really sharp peaks and uh, then I'm gonna do one other thing and I'm gonna offset the rotation by one frame. And let's see how that looks. All right, I like it. That's pretty good. It moves really fast in the middle. And his hand bends back pretty far actually. Um, it could be, it might be too far, I don't know. We can always, if you select your rotation, we can adjust these curves, um, not in that way. 
well, I guess we have to pull it off a little bit. Adjust the curve so that it's not such a steep angle. And that should fix our problem. Let's see. That looks pretty good. I like it. Uh, another question is, does his arm go down far enough? Let's see. If we push his arm even farther, does it look better or does it look worse when he runs? Let's find out. So now I'll hit play. I like, yeah, I kind of like it dropping. Um, maybe what we can do is we'll have it drop down low as it comes in and up but we can keep it high. We'll keep it high as it comes backwards. So it won't drop down as low as he comes to his back resting position. So let's just see. Well, you can't tell the difference, but you know, I like it going lower. All right, cool. So now that that is done, what we can do is we're gonna copy the keyframe and the, the rotation, and we're gonna paste it in the back. And then I'm going to select them all, copy all those keyframes, and we're going to paste them to our left hand. Control V, hit U on the keyboard, and then all we do is delete the first keyframe, and we move them back into position. All right, and then this one, because the shoulder is farther forward, I'm going to hold Shift and move it forward like two keyframes. Another thing you can see is that my rotation is different on this hand than the other one. So I'm gonna select my all my rotation keyframes and I'm gonna rotate it upward so that his hand is straight. Okay, now we'll hit play and see how it looks. All right, I think his arm maybe moves back a little bit too far. So we'll move the arm forward a little bit. I want to get a good play. Come on, play it good. It's like the timing feels a little bit off to me. I don't know why. See, it, it passes really quick right here. I feel like maybe the keyframes are different. Yeah, this one should be spiked upward, but it's not. So let's see why that happened. Does this one lose it? Oh yeah, it does lose it. How strange. All right, so we'll spike this one back and because we adjusted that keyframe, I'm gonna copy it and paste it back at zero. Um, and then I'll paste it here as well, just because. So let me look at these. Let me, I'll copy this keyframe here at the end of the left hand, and then I'll copy it at the beginning Let's see if this changes anything. All right, yep, yeah, timing looks way better. The rotation's doing some crazy stuff, and uh, I think we'll fix that here. <laughs> I feel like I rotated the hand in the wrong direction. I don't know. Something strange is happening. I'm just, let me copy this keyframe and see what happens. No, it's still doing its weird thing. I don't know. Let me delete that. And then I'll rotate it back, maybe. And let's see. Sorry, sometimes things just get a little out of whack and it takes a little problem solving to figure it out. Uh, let's see if that fixed it or if it made it worse. 
All right, so it's rotating in the wrong direction still. So that means if right here we're at negative 155, instead of going to negative 288, what we'll do is we'll go to Seventy-five. Did that fix it? No. What is going on? All right. Sorry, guys. I'm just going to delete all the rotation on that one. I'm going to try it again. So I'm going to grab my rotation, Control C, and then I'm going to paste it, Control V. Okay. And that threw it down. I'm going to delete the first keyframe because we don't need it. And I'm going to pull it back to right there. Is it still doing this weird thing? Yeah, it's spinning. Why are you spinning so much? Let me see. Let's try adjusting it here. Does that do anything? It's still rotating. Okay, I'm just gonna do this one from scratch because this is this is frustrating. Okay. So if this hand is up, key it. Boom. Then we'll come here. And I'm gonna rotate it forward because I know it came down. And this will be my back pose. Boom. And then I'm just going to copy and paste. Back to zero. Select your rotation. Hit F9. Move it forward one frame. And then let's crunch in the numbers. All right, let's watch it. Oh my gosh, what is, what is happening that's making it so weird? Is this original one? The original one's not weird, so why is, why is this one doing all this weird stuff? You know what, I'm gonna solo. I'm gonna solo this arm and this hand. I wanna see what's going on. And then let's solo this guy. So as the arm comes down, I guess the timing is just too drastic. So if I select these rotation points and hit F9, yeah, I don't, let me just, let's just see if we can get this right. All right, that's feeling, that's better. Sorry about that, guys. That just took way longer than I expected, but we got it done. Thanks for sticking with me. We found, we found the right movement. Sometimes it takes a little finesse. All right, cool. So we got this done, and I just for safety's sake, I'm going to copy the last keyframe and paste it at the beginning. I'm just going to delete that. Okay, so next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a little, maybe we'll add a little bounce to his head. So hit P on the keyboard, key the position. Right here at four is the down position, so we'll drop his head down. And then right here at eight is the up position, and we'll copy and paste the first keyframe. Now we can extend it out, select all your keyframes, and hit F9. And we'll move it forward, maybe three keyframes. Now let's do four. This way we can actually copy. We'll copy the down position and paste it at the beginning. So let's see what happens. Um, there's some movement to it, but it's not, it doesn't look right. 
So his head should be down here. So maybe what I'll do is if we hit F9 and we come in, let's see what happens if I crunch these over. I don't know. I feel like the movement's too fast for it to actually read properly. Let's try pushing this over one. Or you know what? Maybe what it needs to be Maybe we need the the um, Twin Peaks. Let's try the Twin Peaks method. Here we go. And we'll see if this fixes anything. All right, now when we watch it, Yeah, there's a little movement to it, but I don't know. I'm just gonna leave it for now. Okay, and then one other thing that I wanna do is I think I wanna offset the head position a little bit, just so it, it doesn't move so uniformly with the shoulders. So the way that we can do that is if we select the keyframes, I just wanna find a way to stretch this neck out a little bit. Um, I don't know if we're gonna get that option. But maybe, whoops. Maybe if I just crunch this one all the way in, then we'll crunch this one all the way in. I want this one to Come down a little bit, so I'm gonna I'm gonna lighten the peak on that one. All right, let's see if that squashes the head a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Unfortunately, it, again, it's moving so fast you can't tell, but I'm gonna leave it. All right, cool. So now we have the run cycle. I want this run cycle to be. I'm gonna delete everything past my um, cycle point because I want to get a perfect loop and I think I'm going to loop this for like maybe three seconds yeah or maybe two I don't know let's just do three seconds to be safe at least three seconds so I just start selecting it and pasting it. There we go. Select, copy, paste. Select, copy, paste. And copy, paste. Oops, I think I did this one wrong. How did I do that? There we go. Yep, make sure your keyframes line up perfectly because if they don't, your animation will not loop. It'll have a pop in it once it gets to the end. Um, and we might experience that. It's not uncommon. But if you're diligent about it, that shouldn't happen. So that's just a matter of copying and pasting. It's boring. This is the boring part. And you're watching it. You guys are just sitting there 
watching. It's like watching paint dry, right? Watch that paint dry. You know what? I actually haven't finished the arm yet. I don't need these. Okay, the arm, um, his, his uh, left arm needs a little more work. So when it comes back, it goes backwards just a little too far. So the way we're going to fix that is we're going to select the position. We're just going to move it forward till the arm is not looking so weird. All right, let's see how this looks as a run cycle. You guys ready? That hand is still doing weird stuff. Why? Can you guys tell me why this is happening? Look at that. All right, so we got to go back into the hand. I guess moving it did something? I just don't know. I'm at a loss. At a loss. All right, so moving that forward helped. Let me move this one forward. I'll move this one forward, and I'm just going to copy and paste it. I'll copy it and then paste it in the beginning. And then I'm going to copy these three. Paste paste and I'm going to go through. I'm replacing all the rotations so that hopefully it works. And one more paste. Okay. Now let's watch it. Please work. No errors. All right. Perfect. Oh, that hand is doing some weird stuff. Why are his hands doing weird stuff, guys? I guess the uh, spikes are a little too strange. Okay, so it's it's a nice spike here, but then right here on the pushback, look at that, his hand's upside down. So we're gonna crunch it in. See that? Oh, and, and be sure that you keep it locked into this timeline here. See this orange line that runs across the screen? That means I'm snapped into place. If you don't see that, right down here is this little snap tool. Make sure it's blue selected. Okay, and that's gonna keep everything locked into place. So now that I've adjusted this one, I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna paste it at the beginning. Next, I'll copy all three and then I'm just gonna run through and paste them. Okay, so that should fix it. All right, sorry guys, but we finally got there. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this tutorial was really helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, again, if you wanna take the full course, click the link below to take my Skillshare class. It's uh, jam-packed with a lot of information and it's gonna be a lot of fun. So I highly recommend it. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, until next time.